All right, we should be live now. Let me uh, double check Facebook, make sure. Uh, let's see here. Um, yep, we're all set. It's popping up there. Cool. All right. What's up, guys? This is the Driver to Racer podcast. And basically, we do car reviews, car racing news. And um, it's a different platform for my race, Colorado, which is more Colorado oriented. Um, I'm here with Brad Peterson who uh, works at our local dealership, uh, Long Ford, and he got the opportunity to uh, borrow a uh, one of the new Ford Bronco Sports. How's it going, Brad? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, so how did you um, end up getting to um, getting that Ford Bronco? Uh, like how, what happened? <laughs> Uh, it, it was kind of an interesting opportunity. Uh, so, so we got in quite a few Broncos. I think our dealership has probably eight or nine Bronco Sports. Oh, wow. And uh, two of them, and, and I'm not exact on the details, uh, but basically the gist of it is that uh, we get two high-end models. They're both Badlands. Um, they, one has the snow package, so it comes with a roof rack and... Uh, the snowboard carrier and whatnot. And the other one is a bike package, so it comes with all the racks and bikes and everything like that. So they're uh, the top model. And basically, Ford will not allow the dealership to sell them until they have 4,000 miles on them. Oh, really? Um, my thinking behind this um, is that they want the vehicles... They, they don't want the dealership to sell out of all the Broncos right. and not have anyone to look at or test drive. So they basically, they're like, here's the top two models and you get to let people drive these, but you can't sell them until they reach 4,000 miles. So, um, huh. so I was uh, working and I, I also drove one of the new 2020 escapes when they came out as well. I got to borrow it on a, like a three day test drive. So I asked them if I could do the same with the Bronco Sport. Uh, and since they can't sell it, <laughs> they went ahead and let me take it for the weekend. All right. Huh. So is it almost so that 4,000 miles is it almost like a break in period or something? No, they like I said, I think they just want the if, if all the other ones sell, they still want the vehicle there for people to be able to come in and look at and test drive. That way, the dealership isn't just completely out of cars. Oh, OK. All right. Okay. So all, all the other ones are, uh, I think they've already sold like half of them already. But yeah, no, none of the other ones have like a 4,000 mile. It's just these two uh, Badlands right. models. Cool. And so they um, they just let anybody borrow them or how does that work? Um, I'm not really sure on the specifics of that. <laughs> oh. um, I've been there for a while. They know me. Right. They know I'm not going to, you know, like destroy the car or anything like that. So yeah. um, they, they definitely do like customers. That, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, they definitely do like the customers test drive them. Uh, I know right. one customer. Um, the other one was loaned to a customer for about a week until their Bronco Sport came in from Ford. Um, right. So yeah, so the other one was being borrowed while I was uh, test driving this one. Oh, nice. Yeah. So. Um, so what's your personal opinion on it? You know, I really like it. Um, a lot of people. I, th I think a, a big problem is that a lot of people don't understand or don't realize that there's a difference between the sport and the full size Bronco. Right. Um, I think if they would have called it the Bronco Two. Mm -hmm. and the Bronco, people would have gotten it in their mind, like, oh, this is yeah. a smaller Bronco. But I, I I, think the sport kind of throws people off. I think they think it's like like an ST version of the Bronco when it's actually a completely different vehicle. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But, um, so yeah, I've, I've noticed a lot of confusion, especially online, and people come into the dealership <laughs> asking me right. about it. Um, even though I work in parts, people still ask yeah. me about these all the time. Um, but uh, I, I, I really like it. I, I've got a 2012 Escape. And basically, it was the last true SUV Escape made uh, from 2013 to 2019. It was more of a crossover. Um, so the Bronco Sport, to me, is basically like the rebirth of that original SUV Escape, okay. um, especially since it's almost identical in size, um, 
length, width, everything is is almost identical to the the old uh, 2012 uh, and an older escapes. Right. So, um, probably not you know the big bad ass off road SUV that the full size is going to be, but it's a right. really nice car. Uh, you know, if you're doing some off road driving or some light, um, you know, off road stuff, it's it, it's it's a really nice car. It's pretty capable. Yeah. Do you would you prefer the more um, that high end off road model, or are you okay with this model? You know, I, I we don't have any of the full size Broncos in yet, and but I do yeah. love them. I think those are awesome. Personally, I would take a two door. I don't really like the way the four door looks, yeah. but that's just my personal thing. Right. I, don't, I don't like the four door Wranglers either. But yeah. um, uh, so I, I mean, I would totally take a two door full size Bronco. But uh, yeah, for for I mean, everyday use, I would totally take a Bronco Sport. In fact, my fiance was with me all weekend because we were just driving around testing it out, and she wants one. So. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, do you think Ford's lineup is already a little um, packed? Because there's quite a lot of SUVs. You know, you get to explore and, you know, they got all these trucks and they're kind of going more towards SUVs and trucks right now. Uh, no focus. Um, do you think it's a little crowded or do you think it still has a place on the lineup? Uh, for For the sport? Um, I guess just, just, yeah, I guess for the sport or yeah, probably for the sport. Cause there's just a whole lot of, you know, SUVs and trucks out there on its lineup. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think the Bronco line is a nice addition to the Ford family. Um, right. because every, everything is gone crossover now. Um, the, the new 2020 Explorer kind of went back to that old, uh, you know, rear wheel drive base SUV, but it, it's still more of a crossover, um you've got the echo sport the escape which are crossovers you've got the edge which is a crossover um so i, I think it's nice for them to kind of get back into the kennedy's like 90s style uh suvs that you can actually do stuff with instead of just cars that are high off the ground basically right um i have a question from um one of my uh facebook friends i don't know if you can answer this one this one might be a little technical but it's uh what's the gear <laughs> ratio on those Oh, ooh, you yeah, know, I might be able to log into my uh, system here. <laughs> my internet finally popped up on the other computer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can actually log in and check and see. Give me a second here. Sure. Um, we can talk, and we can talk about something else while I'm looking this up, too. Um, sure. Uh, um, do you personally think Ford is going the right direction with only trucks and SUVs, or should they bring, like, the Focus back? Well, you know me. I've got three Focuses, yeah. and... Uh, I, I really like the Focus. Uh, I, I really wish they would bring it back. Um, Ford US never really gave a crap about cars. Um, and, and I don't want to get into politics or anything like that, but uh, I'm, Trump got rid of the EPA standards. Mm -hmm. And Ford said, cool, we don't have to sell these fuel efficient cars anymore. We don't have to sell the Fusion or the Focus. We don't right. even have to sell the Taurus or anything. Because they had to sell X amount of uh, gas saving cars to counter all the gas guzzling trucks that they sold. Right. So since they didn't have to do that anymore, they basically said, cool, we're just not going to make cars anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but they didn't want to shut their factories down. So they wanted to have wait until they had something else to replace those other cars in those factories. Oh, hi, Kitty. Um, so that, that, I think that's why it took a few years for them to actually kind of phase that out. Yeah. Um, now, with Biden being in office and being on the other side, he I wouldn't be surprised if he brought the EPA standards back or something similar. So if so he maybe, does, yeah. Ford will probably have to bring back the Focus and or some other small uh, economy cars to kind of balance right. that out. Yeah. Um, so and I was actually talking to a coworker about this earlier today when Ford originally brought the Focus over in 2000 and were, were selling those first generation focuses they were losing money on the sales of those cars they weren't oh, really? actually making money yeah they were selling them for less than it cost to make them oh, but wow. they didn't care because yeah. they the more of those they sold the more trucks they got to sell and they had much more of a markup on the truck so it vastly made up for the difference of that money that they were losing for the economy cars oh, so they really didn't yeah. care oh, um wow. 
which yeah which i it, it's just it's interesting it's, it's kind of yeah. you know one of those things you don't really think about <laughs> yeah because i mean i remember seeing a whole lot of you know focuses on the road i mean it's kind of interesting yeah <laughs> um let's see. Okay, so here is the one that I drove. This one had a uh, 380 gear ratio uh, for the Badlands, and that was with the 2 liter Eco Boost. Oh, okay. So 380 is the gear ratio? Yeah, it look, looks like on the one that I test drove, it could be, they, they might have multiple ones. Uh, the 1.5 uh, yeah. three cylinder Eco Boost might have a different gear ratio. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but yeah, and this this being a Badlands with the uh, the rock crawl mode and everything, it yeah. might be higher than some of the other models. But yeah, the one that I test drove had a had a three eighty rear engine. Oh wow! Um, do you guys have any? Uh, yeah, uh, kind of a little bit off question, but do you guys have that Maki, the Mustang Maki, at your dealership yet? Or um, we got some. I don't want to say in, but we had two at our dealership for a day. Um, and, uh, some Ford reps came down and then we're talking about them to, uh, some of the people who had put in reservations for them. So I did get to see them sitting them. Um, uh, th they're definitely interesting cars. Mm -hmm. Um, I personally not a fan of, my, of the name. I think they could have called it the yeah. galaxy or the fair lane or something like yeah. that. Like that, like, honestly, I, they could have called it the galaxy. That would have been cool. It kind yeah. of matches with that, like electric feel. That electric, yeah. That would have been awesome. Rings back an old nameplate. Uh, All right. but they wanted to call it the Mustang and, you yeah, know, people can argue that. with that and say it's not a Mustang, but it is because that's what Ford decided to call it. And yeah, <laughs> that's kind exactly. of the end of the story there. Yeah. I don't uh, agree with either, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got a comment from Jared Thompson. He says he uh, misses your face. <laughs> oh, I miss Jared yeah. too. I want to give you a big old <laughs> hug. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I guess, uh, we'll get back to the Bronco. Um, actually speaking of the yeah. Mustang Mach-E since we're on it, yeah, the Mustang Mach-E shares the same chassis as the Bronco Sport and the Escape. Oh, wow. Huh. It's not even on a Mustang chassis. It's, it's on, I, I can't remember what they called it, it but it's, um, it's the, basically the crossover chassis that's shared with the Focus and the, uh, C-Max overseas the right. Bronco and the Escape. So it's not even on like a Mustang chassis. It's not even like a Mustang based yeah. vehicle. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, have you uh, taken the Bronco off road or has it just been doing tarmac? <laughs> I, I didn't get a chance to take it off road, unfortunately. Um, I did drive it, I don't really want to say through the snow. It started snowing yeah. over the weekend, but it didn't really stick. So, All right. um, but yeah, so I, I didn't really get a chance to do much off road testing on it, unfortunately. Okay. Um, but I did play around with the modes because um, it has a bunch of different drive modes. Oh. And the rock crawl mode that the Badlands version gets is actually pretty neat. Oh. Um, once you put it into the rock crawl mode, because it's, it's got that little dial thing, oh. uh, it automatically locks the four wheel drive in, uh, it locks the differential so you don't have any because it's an uh, electronically controlled differential. Um, so it locks the diff. Um, and then there's a front camera on it too. So it flips oh, on that yeah. front camera, puts it on the yeah. main screen. Uh, so you can see what's in front of you. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a neat feature. I, I was kind of upset. I didn't get to test it out, but I also yeah. didn't want to be calling my dealership saying, Hey, I, I rolled the Bronco. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, don't the new, I think the new Raptors have that same little camera up front too, don't they? They do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I have another question from my friend Fritz. Um, he's asking, what's the price on the new Bronco, roughly? Uh, I actually had that written down in my notes here. So uh, the base models start out at twenty six grand. Okay. Um, usually bad. with like dealer shipping, it's you're you're not going to see one any less than twenty eight. So I I say about twenty eight is where they start at, which which isn't that a bad price. Yeah, that's pretty um, good. Especially considering that the Escape, which is based on the same chassis starts out at 30 grand. So it actually starts out less than the escape does. Right. Um, and these only come in four wheel drive. You can't get a Bronco in two wheel drive. Uh, um, yeah. Now the one I tested, the fully loaded Badlands, uh, that was at, with all the accessories and everything, the final price was 39.7. So. Okay. And then um, like the, um, he's asking, uh, 
with you know everything all in uh the whole badlands package i guess all that how much would you think that would start around um i think the badlands package starts at 30, 30 i think 35 36 around there okay so all right yeah that's not actually that bad I yeah mean. it's i mean it, it's really it's really it's not too expensive and and i believe the full size bronco starts out at about the same price it starts out at about the, at about twenty eight thousand. so and i think uh a raptor's around the are they around that 60 grand range oh, i that, i think the they're pretty expensive aren't they the raptors are crazy expensive um we had a shelby raptor and that thing went for over 100k <laughs> it's insane <laughs> Yeah. Uh, if you buy a Shelby Raptor, you're not taking that thing off road. I don't get the point. Oh, yeah. um, if I buy a Spice Fest Ben about thousand dollars on a truck, I'm not taking it off road. Yeah, I just uh, don't see the point of having that. I, I've even heard some people say that Shelby trucks aren't really even all that fast because you're carrying all that weight. I, I, I won't even get into Shelby trucks. The Shelby yeah. nameplate, they're not even made by Shelby anymore. They're also is outsourced to a third yeah. uh, party company that slaps a Shelby badge on them. So right. they're, they're not even the same as what they used to be. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Same with the Mustang. It's, it's outsourced to a, a third party company and they just put Shelby's yeah. logo stuff on it, basically. Yeah. So um, when I was waiting for you to get on, um, I was kind of looking through pictures and there's um, something I can probably share the screen here. Um, let me try sharing the screen here and we can look at, um, let's see, share screen, Chrome tab, right here. it's this one here. Yeah. Um, so basically it's, I guess, I don't know if you have this on your Bronco, it says like goat modes, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. So, so that is that picture is from a Badlands, okay. um, and yeah, it uh, stands for goes over any terrain. Oh, that's kind of uh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Like so, that. so you could use that dial to switch between the six modes. Uh, okay. Which are, I believe, ice, sport, uh, normal mode, uh, mall crawler, dirt. <laughs> rock crawling and then i think there's like a sand mode as well okay um yeah. and you can see on the kind of the right side top of that uh that's that's actually the button to lock the diff and you can actually press that any time and manually lock that diff right. um but when you put it into the rock crawl mode that button automatically lights up and it automatically puts it in in that mode oh cool yeah that's nice yeah, it's it's kind of a neat it's 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 a neat little car. I I, I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, is there any? Um, so, what are your like? Let's just get down to the basics. Um, what's your likes and dislikes on it? Um. So, when I first got it, the hood has these two big bulges on it, and and it's it's very flat and just drops off. When I and, I and I'm not used to driving cars like that, look like that, not since I had my own manual Mustang. Um, but uh, it, so it, it was definitely kind of odd not having that, you know, that gradual sloping. But after driving it for probably 20 minutes, I, I actually kind of got used to it and actually kind of started to and enjoy the look of that. It, it, it feels very, um, I don't know, badass, I guess. It just kind of feels kind of muscular when you're driving it. It's it, it feels like an off-roading, you know, like you can take it off-roading. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I have another comment from Fritz. Um, he's asking, is it a springs or leaf kind of style suspension? Um, it, it is a springs um, or coil springs. The uh, front is a McPherson style. Um, the rear is an independent uh, rear suspension with coil springs. Okay. Cool. Uh, the full-size Bronco... I believe does have a leaf spring system in the rear. Huh. All right. Um, yeah, there was another thing I um, was looking at on the interior. I think it's um, the shifter is a little bit different as I relate it to. Um, so uh, um, I've been given a Ford Ranger, you know, one of those new Rangers to, you know, um, mm -hmm. as a loaner. And um, 
there's something on the shift. Uh, like I noticed right away, the shifter is kind of like different. I'll show you a screenshot here. Um, let's see. So I, you can kind of see next to the cup holder, kind of above the goats. So is that the shifter, that kind of knob looking thing? Yeah, and, and Ford's starting to put a lot of those uh, uh, rotator dials in their vehicles. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you use that to switch it from uh, park to drive. Okay. Um, there's a little button in the middle that you can hit uh, that has an M on it for manual mode, and then you can use the paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheel to huh. shift. Yeah, it's, um, that's interesting. It's kind of completely different than the Ranger because Ranger has that kind of more... Um, fighter pilot kind of shifter yeah <laughs> which i thought was kind of weird is that it didn't have the paddle shifters i thought we were moving on to that but it has a little <laughs> buttons on the shifter which i don't know about that but i mean i will say i i, I like the ford ranger a lot i mean i i'm pretty impressed when they said oh we're gonna give you this loaner for F ford ranger i'm thinking oh okay so slow small truck and then you get in it it's <laughs> not really that small and it has a you know the turbo 2.3 in there and i mean that thing really gets gets up some goes i mean it's pretty quick that 230 ego boost in that ranger is really fun you can yeah. let those rear tires loose really easy with that engine. right yeah yeah it's a great ride yeah that's um, pretty fun yeah for sure the uh the, the 2.0 in the badlands is pretty peppy as well um yeah. i mean it's it's basically the same engine that was in the focus st obviously it's detuned a little bit um, right. not much it's got 240 horsepower compared to 250 so yeah it's a slight difference but uh, yeah and the car weighs you know over four thousand pounds but uh it, right. it, 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 it's pretty zippy it's fun to drive yeah one thing that i thought was interesting is that when you put it in sport mode uh you hear the engine more or so i thought uh, I thought they had the same uh, supposer system like the Mustangs and like the Focus STs have, where it lets more engine noise right. into the car. Yeah. Turns out that's actually not what it is. It's actually playing V8, so, apparently. So sounds. is it like the Focus RS one with the fake sound kind of it, thing? It, oh, does it do that too? Yeah. So, yeah, it plays yeah. fake sounds over the yeah. radio. Um right. <laughs> But honestly, I didn't realize that it was being played over the speakers until yeah. I did more research and was reading into it. So it's right. it doesn't sound odd, really. Yeah. I, I guess I mean it sounds it's very fluid. It goes up and down with the engine and everything like that. So right. uh, it's uh, it, it, it it's kind of a nice system. I it, I think it's kind of dumb out of just putting exhaust in an intake yeah, on it. But uh, too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it definitely doesn't sound artificial. I didn't think it sounded like a V8. I thought it just sounded like uh, a more rumbly four-cylinder. But uh, yeah, it, it right. sounds very fluid. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, my friend Fritz has another question. Um, <laughs> what what engine is on those Broncos? Uh, so the Badlands gets the two-liter EcoBoost, uh, which is a four-cylinder. Um, all the other models get the 1.5 three-cylinder EcoBoost. Okay. And the 1.5 has 100 or 180 horsepower. Okay. Huh. So, um, but yeah, you can only get the two-liter EcoBoost in the Badlands edition. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking it would be maybe closer to the Ranger with the 270 horsepower, but yeah, yeah, it would have been really nice if they put the 2.3 in yeah. it. But. <laughs> but I guess we're not looking at like some drag racer kind of thing. It's more for the off-road kind of going after the Jeep Wrangler kind of. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, there's another thing I noticed in one of the pictures. Um, I thought it was kind of funny. Um, I'll show you here. Um, it's a bottle cap opener, I guess, built into. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of neat. I, I, we took our friends out to dinner on Saturday night, and I was like, hey, go for a ride in the Bronco. So, yeah, I was telling them about the bottle opener, and they were like, well, that sounds like it's encouraging drinking and driving. And I was like, no, no, it, it's in the hatchback. You have to have the hatch open to use it. So. Right. Yeah. I mean, I can I can see how that could, you know, be, be portrayed. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if you've got the hatch open, you're, you know, grilling and whatever. I mean, it's, it's a nice little built-in feature. 
Right. Um, I don't think yeah. that's the only selling part on the car. Otherwise, you're buying a twenty-eight thousand dollar beer bottle opener. But right. Yeah, for sure. One of the uh, speaking of the hatch, though, one of the features I really liked. Okay. Um, is that it has two lights in the corner of the hatch as you open it up. Huh. Uh, and you can aim those lights inside the cargo area, or you can flip them the other way and aim them outside the car. So, yeah, if oh, you're cool. cooking and grilling or doing something outside, uh, mm -hmm. you can open up that hatch and have lights aimed at, you know, kind of whatever you're doing. So oh, that's uh, nice. th they definitely put a lot of thought into it. It's It's, it's got yeah. a lot of little neat features like that. So they really went kind of after not only off-roading, but also uh, camping. Yeah, yeah. I, I think camping is, I think that's actually a really good comparison. The, the full-size yeah. Bronco is more for, like, crawling and off-roading, where this is, yeah, probably more for, like, off-roading camping style. Okay, right. Um, so, uh, let's see. Um, what would you say the ride is like? Is it pretty rough, or is it? pretty comfortable it's pretty comfortable um I, I i i really liked it we took it on the freeway up to denver and back um and yeah it, it rode really smooth um it uh wasn't uh like super bouncy or anything like that because it does kind of have that off-road suspension uh right. but it wasn't super stiff either it just it just rode really nice oh nice um, has anybody, um, when you go around town, um, has anybody said anything about it? Um, it um I had, no one said anything about it when I, when I took it out. Um, but, uh, I think I only got gas once and it was at Costco, so no one really cared. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, your prefer, your, your, um, opinion would probably be that you would buy it. You would probably say that. Oh yeah, yeah, I would totally own one. Um, you know, like I said, I've got my 2012 Escape, and I lo absolutely love that thing. Right. Um, I wouldn't buy it new because I just I don't buy new cars in Colorado. I wait five years, so I don't have to pay insane tax prices. Right. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I would definitely pick one up used in a couple of years. Yeah. Um, now I would say probably the biggest downfall of the Bronco Sport in my eyes is the towing capacity. Okay. My 2012 Escape with the 3 liter V6 can tow 3,500 pounds. Mm -hmm. The Bronco Sport has a towing capacity of 2,200 pounds. Huh. So yeah. it's it's a very, very low towing capacity, uh, which is understandable. Um, it's, you know, you're, you're kind of on that off-road suspension. So it's, it's made for bouncing around on right. dirt and gravel. It's not really made for towing troops. Um, right. So I, I kind of understand why it's low. I think the full-size Bronco towing capacity is really low as well. I think it's 20, 2,700 pounds. Huh. Um, so, yeah, neither of them are really designed for carrying large loads. You know, you can obviously tow four-wheelers and stuff like that. Right. But, uh, yeah, they're they're definitely not meant for tow rigs. <laughs> all right. Um, well, I guess that's all the questions I could think of. Um, is there anything else you want to say about it? Um, not that I can think of. Uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely a nice ride. Uh, if, if you're looking for a small off-road worthy capable SUV, you know, something that the family can fit in, I, I would definitely recommend picking one up there. They're really nice. Right. For sure. Well, um, I appreciate you taking your time out of, uh, you know, joining me and getting to chat with me at the Bronco. Um, we'll have to do it again sometime. Yeah, hopefully uh, we should be getting the full-size Broncos around June, July. So hopefully they'll let me okay. pick one of those out too. <laughs> sure, that'd be awesome. Yeah, cool. Well, it was nice talking to you. Yeah, you as well, Don. Yeah, see you. Bye.